Nolly, I want you to read this off to me, off to us, if you don't mind. What does it say? May CPL $1, August CPL $7. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Stella, we obviously can see that the CPL got more expensive. Um, Stella, tell everybody why, why do you think the CPL, in your opinion, as a guess, why do you believe the CPL got more expensive? I think it might cost by the, um, the new update, the IOA system. So the results is not including the people who opt out from assistance mm -hmm. and their algorithm might have been updated based on this. Very good. That's a great opinion. Um, I wanna attack it from a different angle, um, but that is an amazing opinion. Very high tech. Hannah, other than what Stella said, something that's different, why do you believe the CPO got more expensive? Well, considering the metrics are on CPL gets expensive when we have our CTR drop or lower, or it could also be an effect from our landing page conversion rate. Okay, good, very good. An effect from a landing page conversion rate, CTR also could be dropping or could have dropped. Okay. All right. Dolly, would you agree? Yes. All right. So if the CTR or landing page conversion rate has dropped, let's say the CTR has dropped. Okay, sure. But why, Dolly, why would the CTR drop? Maybe because we've been running the same Add creatives for months. Oh, okay. So we're running the same ad creatives for months, and that could have caused the CTR to drop. And most of the time, if it is running for months, it's highly likely the CTR will drop, especially if the audience is small and local. Local audience, obviously, is a small audience which can increase the, the chances of the CTR dropping. Could, could you agree with that, Ivy? Yeah. All right. So if the CTR has dropped, and the reason it's dropped is because we've run in the same ads for months, what is the name of that called? It starts with an F. Um, Hannah, could you answer that? Fatigue. Yeah, fatigue. Fatigue. So it's possible that the ad is fatigue. That's what Dolly is saying. All right. There are different types of fatigues. Does anybody know what types of fatigues are, Hannah? What are the, the different types of fatigues? Market or audience fatigue. Okay. Let me type it. So first is audience fatigue. All right. What are the other types? Could be offer fatigue as well, Art. Offer fatigue. Any other types? Add creatives. Add fatigue. 
any other types? I think that's just it. Okay. So it looks to me like we got three types of fatigues. Dolly, did you know that we had three types of fatigues? Yes, I only know three. We already knew three. All right. So what comes first? Does the offer come first, audience, or add fatigue come first? Which one comes first, um, Dolly? I think it's the ad. All right. It's the ad fatigue that comes first. OK. Could you agree with that, Stella? The ad fatigue comes first? Or Stella, do you think something else comes first? Yeah, maybe. Um ad or audience, because it depends on the market. If the art market has a large audience base, so it, it cannot be compared with a small audience base. So it depends. Right, good. So ad fatigue, you would say normally comes first. Is that right? On average. Yep. yep. And then typically what's next? Hannah, what's the next stage of fatigue? Is it audience or, or is it the offer? The audience. Is it the audience or, or is it the offer? Say it again so people can I hear. I think it's the audience. I think it's the audience. Sorry. Okay, the audience fatigue. All right, and then the last stage of fatigue is, is what, Hannah, the offer? Offer. Very good. So going back to the ad, um, if we have an ad fatigue, Dolly, how would we fix that? If the ad is fatigued, what do we do? We can rotate or run a different um, ad creatives, ad yeah, images. Right? It's easy, right? Change the ad, right? Change the ad, right? So if we change the ad, typically that can help fight fatigue, right? And that'll only solve it for how long will it solve the problem? Will it solve it forever or will it solve it temporarily? Dolly? Just temporarily. Yeah, temporarily. Now, what about audience fatigue? If we have some audience fatigue, Hannah, how do we fix that? Test new set of audiences. Have a new set of audience? You mean rotate the audience, right? So yes, rotate. rotate it, rotate the audience. And that way, when we do that, we'll typically be, you know, getting, well, get, getting, uh, can't even fix it. We'll typically be able to target a different audience, an audience who hasn't seen this our brand in a long time, who haven't seen this offer in a long time, whatever. We'll be able to rotate the audience and then let the, the other audience take a break, right? Let the other audience consume ADA content. That way we can kind of keep it flowing. So if we do this correctly, honestly, we can run the same offer for you know, a pretty good long time if we rotate these audiences strategically. But if we rotate the audience um, too aggressively 
or if we target both audiences, the chances are it's going to suffer a lot, right? And then we won't be able to rotate audiences anymore. So if that happens, Hannah, what could we do? What will we have to do? Change offer. Yeah, change the offer. And this offer that we change, unfortunately, would have to be a better offer than last time in order for it to, to successfully work. If the offer isn't better, that won't work. So we will definitely be, you know, having a hard time getting these ads to work. And I've seen this happen before in, in multiple accounts. And I would guess everyone has. And we want to combat that by being more strategic about our rotation. And honestly, uh, it'll help us in the long run with, you know, keeping a stable calls per acquisition. So going back to the last one, if we have suffered audience offer fatigue, and let's say we've run a program, I don't know, a 12 week program to persona one, and then we rotated it to persona two, and then we rotated it back to persona one, and then we rotated it back to persona two, and and they're just not converting like they used to convert. They're not signing up like they used to sign up. The offer is fatigued. So if we run it to either audience, it doesn't matter. It's not working as like it used to. So we're suffering from offer fatigue, which is the last stage. And whenever we suffer from offer fatigue, Dolly, what can we do? Um, we can pause the old offer, then launch the new offer. All right, launch the new offer. And but this, the problem with this is, this is when you have to put your brain together and figure out what offer we can run. But there's a good thing. If we change the offer, and let's say we create six, four to six offers, per year, if you do it correctly, correctly means strategically, you could have four to six solid offers that you can run on a rotated schedule per year. I've seen accounts that have this before. It's quite difficult at first, but once you have it, you know, you can honestly rotate ads, audiences, and offers where you don't really have to create new funnels, create new campaigns, create, you still might have to create new ads sometimes, but most of the time, if you have a lot of ads in the account, you can, you normally won't have to create um, new ads, if not just a few, but you will no longer need to create new offers and you will no longer need to create new funnels. And obviously you won't need to touch the audience. Wouldn't that be great because you only don't have to do that much work. All you have to do is turn ads on and turn them off, turn campaigns on, turn them off, turn ad sets on, turn them off. That's the ideal world that we want to be in because it's, it's a predictable outcome. Now there isn't a, it's not going to be perfect because there are going to be times where it's, it's prematurely failing. That means we expected to rotate it in a month, but it's failing early. So we rotate it two weeks early and that puts us ahead of schedule. Now we have to come up with another offer because we rotated it too early and the next offer we rotated to was also early and we have no other audiences and offers to, to use in that time frame. So we need to come up with another one. That's happens, that happens. 
you have to just uh, be prepared for it. But it can give us a sense of a direction. And that direction would be uh, creating marketing campaigns that we can predictably forecast the outcome of a longevity success. Because at the end of the day, that's what we want. We don't want to have a client for one month or three months. We want to keep them for years. And the only way to do that, the only way to do that is to create a predictable long-term strategy that we can adjust at will. It's all up to you, though, when it comes to rotation. Rotation. We say change, we say rotate. It's the same thing. It's all up to you when it comes to rotation. If we are going to um, listen to the client and run two audiences at the same time, then we won't have nothing to rotate to. Then it's going to fail. After a while, it's going to be harder to get it to work like it used to. Or if we run two campaigns at the same time, targeting two different markets, we're going to fatigue both of them eventually. And then again, we won't have an audience to rotate to. Therefore, we need to come up with a different strategy. The last problem with this situation is this. If we fatigue our audiences and we have to come up with a new offer, even if we change the offer, it is not going to work for a long time because they were already fatigued. It might work, but it only work for a very short time. And then we're fatigued again. So. Has anyone ever saw that before? Stella, have you ever saw this happen before? Yes. Yeah. And it's a very difficult situation because we have to come up with another offer or another way. And it's very stressful. I'm going to tell you a secret that can help combat that. And it's called a contingency plan. Contingency plan. Contingency plan. Does anybody know what contingency plan mean? Hannah, do you know what it means? Yeah, like a backup plan. Yeah, you know, having a backup plan. So, to have a backup plan, there are things and ways you can do this. One of the most common and easiest way is to have a backup persona. Most of the time, this backup persona is location-based. So what I mean by that is this. If we're targeting a city, let's say we're targeting um, the whole area of the whole city. Let's say this is the whole city that we're targeting. And inside of this city, we've got maybe two personas, persona one, persona two. All right. Let's say that if we target this whole city, let's say that we do not target this area right here. This area right here is our backup plan. So what that means is if we ever happen to fatigue persona one and 
persona two in that city and we can't really run anything or do anything and it's hard to come up with a good offer that we think it work and we try to convince the client to to just pause the ads and take a break and run eight or four months and they can't do it or afford to do that if we were to have a backup plan and we were to say not target this area at all never then this could be our backup plan our contingency that means we can give this whole city a break and only target this small area right here and then that area can be our backup plan let's say that backup plan can help uh, get our leads cheap like they used to be for an extended period of time maybe one two three one month who knows three weeks but at least during that time frame we can give this city a break and they can consume some fresh brand new content from ada that's a backup plan i've done this before one time or another we targeted a big old city and then everything was fatigued everything was fatigued and there's nothing we could do so when i talked to the client he accepted that we can target people who were more far away so we just expanded the radius a little bit more bigger and that helped us get more fresh people people over here over here and over here and over here. So that gave him more of a bigger reach and that fresh market was signing up and his ads was very cheap again. That was the backup plan I had. I targeted his city that was more small, but as a as a emergency, he was okay to target people more far away. And we just expanded the radius one more mile, two, three more miles, and that helped him get results. So that's another thing you can do. Now, it's very difficult sometimes if you're in a condensed population or whatever. It's very hard, but if you do target a new location, guess what? That's a, that's a new market. That's a new audience. And what happens? What happens most of the time when we target a new location, Stella? In some cases, what happens? Sorry, what, what is the question? What happens? I didn't hear clear. What happens when we target a new location, a new audience? In some cases, when we run an offer, what happens when we target a new fresh audience who haven't seen us before and it's brand new, it's a new location, what happens? Um, if it's a new location, I think there will be a big chance that, um, um, you know, we can get cheaper results if the local competition is lower. Right. So if we have always gotten good results in this city, but of course we're fighting fatigue maybe you guys listened to the client and decided to run both audiences at the same time whatever anything and it's kind of hard to get anything to work because we're dealing with fatigue audience fatigue off fatigue one of the most backup plans we can do is expand that radius 
to a different location and show this ad to a different market and that will get them results. But again, everything is temporarily. So that means you have, you are getting good results right now, but you need to focus on the long term. That means you need to, to create a, an action plan for those personas who are fatigued and start delivering them some fresh content and then start going over a brand new offer with the client that we can test for that new, uh, for that old persona who's getting content now. That'd be the best strategy because that way, when it's time to run an offer to that old market, we will have a high success possibility rate because of the the content that they were getting and and also because they haven't seen any of our offers for a while. So that's another way to do it. Now, of course, if you have a client who can't afford to use that strategy, they can't expand their radius, it's just too far, then you need to think ahead of schedule and you need to think, okay, what if I can divide these locations Maybe if they can expand that location, what if I can, ahead of schedule, get a chunk of a location here, exclude it from our, all of our offers and everything, and then use that as a backup plan, use that as an emergency plan. That'll be our contingency plan. And then that way, when it is time to, or if it does happen, at least you have a backup plan. That'll work. That's another way. All right, last thing. There is one more other way besides location that you can use that'll help. Location is one. There's another one, one more that you can do. Let's say, let's say persona one is, you know, men 30 to 50. Persona two is females 30 to 50. Uh, what's the second thing you can do, Hannah, as an emergency plan if all else is not working because of fatigue? If you can have persona three. Create another persona. And you have to talk to the client about this. And the client will tell you, yeah, well, you mean, we normally don't, but we could target, you know, the younger population, or we normally don't, but we could target um, the older population. You know, that's another persona. That's another age group that will convert. And most of the time that works because the client, they have clients who are all types of ages, but they're telling you what they would prefer. I would prefer 30 to 50. That's what I want. I prefer it. But we're in an emergency situation, fatigue, right? So we need to think ahead of schedule and say, all right, would you be willing to accept clients who are 50 to 65 plus, and they'll say no. Well, that's fine. Our age cutoff is 50. What about 50 to 55? And then they'll say yes, that's only a five year difference. That's only five year difference. What's the big deal? So you've got a five year difference that may give you a potential reach of who knows, 20,000 people. And that's enough for you to run ads to, to give you that, that, that lean way to, you know, get cheaper leads, better leads until you run a, create a strategy for the persona one and two. So yes, location is one, creating another persona is also number two. And most of the time that persona is, is an age group that is out of the ordinary age. 
So let's use um, let's use one example, and then we're done. One example would be um, I don't know. Um, let's see, take a look at Joe Bramer as an example, as an example. So Joe Bramer, he has a marketing plan and his personas are females from 30 to 48 males from 30 to 50, males and females 50 to 65, that's it. So we're, we're hitting 50 to 65, 30 to 50, we're hitting 30 to 65. We're hitting 30 to 65. So if Hannah was to run ads for Joe and She's dealing with some audience fatigue and offer offer fatigue, and there's nothing we can do. At least we have something that says um, women 20 to 30, 25 to 35. So she has an age group that could target potential men and women 25 to 29, right? So 25 to 29 is an age group that probably haven't saw Joe's ads before, if not for a long time. And that's a, that's a small age group that we could target to get results temporarily while we focus on the long-term effect. Do you guys understand? Go ahead and type yes if you do, or type no if you don't. Okay, thank you. So what that means is if Hannah's running ads for Joe and the cost per leads are expensive and um, all of her markets are, are obviously fatigued and, and they're tired of seeing Joe's six-week challenge and stuff, then if she needs to get good results, she can pause all of these personas and then run persona uh, male and female 25 to 29 for a six week challenge. And she will get results because likely that age group haven't saw those ads. So while she's getting good results for the campaign, she's focusing on persona one and two again. And she's focusing on creating uh, a brand new ADA, an ADA that's you know different a little bit because they can fatigue from seeing Ada too. Of course, if they saw the same video, there's, it'd be fatigued. Everything fatigues, Ada or in everything. So you have to change Ada out just like you change your offers out. But of course, she'll focus on creating a brand new Ada, something that's different. Her and, and Joe will get to work on creating fresh content better content, better quality content, you know, she could go inside of Joe's application form and, and take a look at these people's pains and problems and, and group them all together and, and give it to Joe and tell Joe that he needs to create ADA based on these problems that they're seeing in the application form. Joe will agree and create content and then guess what? She'd be able to create some fresher content based on the exact problems people are having. And then if that's how you would make it work and create a new offer as well, a different offer. So that's, how, that's what you wanna do as far as strategize a plan. Don't, don't just expect rotating to work, expect it to fatigue, and then you have to come up with a different plan. But that's okay. You, Things like this happen, especially in local markets where you're targeting a city and 
you know, it's not a lot of people, right? So that's what you want to learn. So I want everybody to type inside of the chat box. Type if you learned something new or type if you already knew this and you didn't learn anything new. Go ahead and type that for me right now. All right, apply it, apply it. And then if you seek help, let Hannah and me know and we'll be able to help you. Thank you everybody. Have a great rest of your day.